The Solar Free Point has been getting better and better for me each time I use it, and it feels like a brand new subclass in general with the amount of things you could pull off with it. So let's dive into the aspects a little bit. There was Ruin, and a ton of other solar exotics work with Solar Free Point in many ways, with some having great interactions. But there was Ruin is different. It doesn't have any major effects with Solar Free Point whatsoever. Instead, they can pump out a lot of damage when tuned right. That's right folks, meet Devil's Ruins 3.0, a step up from the last one we did, but this time with more spice. I'll show you how to master the weapon in a few easy steps, and why you should hold on to it and any other solar weapons in the near future. But you know what else feels better after each use? This channel right here, so if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future, it goes a long way for me. And let's start with the subclass, which will be Blade Barrage for a good ad clearing of boss DPS. The super isn't much of the point here, but rather the aspects of fragments being used are, we are focusing on enhancing the weapon through simple means and pulling off extra damage so we can delete things quickly. For the fragments, as an example, we have Gunpowder Gamble, which allows us to build up an improvised grenade, which does even more damage than normal. We then have On Your Marks, where precision kills will increase weapon handling and reload speed for a short duration. For Fragments, we have Ember Combustion, where super final blows ignite a target. Ember Imperium, where solar weapons or ability kills extend the duration of restoration and radiant. Ember of Solace, increases the duration of restoration and radiant. And Ember of Torches, where powered melee attacks makes you and the allies radiant. For stats, you want to have your mobility at 90, Strength at 50 to 60, and Discipline at 60. Ideally, focus on getting your mobility up before going into any other stats, as the hunters have to be more flexible here. For mods, we then have Supercharge, which gives us a plus 2 extra charge with lights. Surprise Attacks, which give our sidearm a plus 40% damage boost on PV while charged with light. Taking Charge and become charged with light via Orbs of Power. Powerful Friends for a plus 20 mobility and giving allies charged with light. Swift Charge for becoming charged with light through more kills via your sidearm. And lastly, Machineer's Trick Sleeve for a near 100% sidearm buff while injured. It will also grant us increased handling and reloading for sidearms as well. As a very simple charge with light build, we'll be focusing on damage increasements from multiple sources so we can keep using our alternative fire from Dell's Ruin at maximum firepower. A thing for like Death Star, but smaller and not so easy to destroy. With our subclass, we become and stay raging for a very long time, as long as we keep getting kills, and then we can stack even more damage from there by adding on Machineers and Surprise Attack to the mix for lethal levels of damage. It will either outright annihilate a target on demand, or leave them with enough health that they can be blown away with a single melee. Either way, this can be implemented with other weapons and not just Devil's Ruin, so you have room to improve. For weapons, we know Devil's Ruin will be the main key to the build, so I won't cover the primary section this time round, considering that Devil's Ruin can cover close and mid ranges pretty quickly, and easily. So why Devil's Ruin exactly? Well, thanks to a patch that made prime weapons now have infinite ammo that they can use for all content. This in a way has buffed the majority of weapons that lack reserves or ammo from the get-go. Devil's Ruin is no exception to the buff, and a special perk called Close the Gap greatly benefits from this as you can repeat the miniature laser blast as many times as you like. Considering how powerful it becomes when you add a mod such as Surprise Attack to the mix, the weapon pretty much becomes unstoppable in a lot of content with majors or ultra combatants, and minor combatants literally become dust. On top of that, the laser blast is pretty powerful to the point that you can use it as a persuasive fusion to melt anything it touches. It also comes as an anti-champ weapon and can be used against unstoppables, and in many ways because of how strong this ability is on its own, you can bring this into any high level endgame content without much hassle involved. There are better choices of course, but if you're up against a hive witch with similar shields for 90% of the content, or a cabal who are a bit more tanky than other combatants, then I see no wrong in bringing this weapon with you, especially if you have the Elemental Worlds mods attached to it as well. For Heavy now, we have the Hothead rocket launcher with tracking rounds and explosive light, and this is a good weapon to have since you'll be creating a lot of orbs of power on the go. With such a setup, I can dish out even more damage when paired with my subclass and weapon in total, 
And to be fair, I'll probably feel sorry for the bosses who go up against an insane hunter with a miniature death star and a tactical nuke to boot. If you don't have this, then go and farm the Palamaya B rocket launcher, as that can also get explosive light as well, and is a bit better than Hothead in terms of just farming it. For the stats, the main thing to focus on is mobility, discipline, and probably melee depending on what you have left over. The build will focus heavily on using Acrobat's dodge to empower us, and from there we can chain our fragments to it to make them last longer. As this is kind of it in terms of the most important stats to invest in, you can then freely choose how you like to spend your stats elsewhere. For mobility though, I would recommend you keep it at 90 to 100 so you can pull it off constantly. We don't have Elemental World mods this time round to help us out, but we can add on the Millie Wallmaker mod if we wish, by simply taking out the Taken Charge mod instead, but only if you wish to incorporate said mod. If possible, I'd recommend you add on the Powerful Friends mod as well, so you can get an extra plus 20 in mobility, and then you can easily expand from there. Afterwards, you can then add on the Distribution mod if you like, but honestly, the passive cooldown for the stat is pretty high, and on top of that, if we run out of dodge to stay empowered, we can always swap to melee instead and reapply the buff as many times as we like. Discipline wise, we have ours at 60, and this should be enough since we won't be using our grenades all the time. However, as we have the gunpowder gamble aspect on, we will use it once we have fully built up our stacks. We don't have any additional mods for this, so instead get a primary weapon with demolitions built into it to make your lives a bit more easier. Lastly, melee is at 50, although this can be pushed down to 60, and this can be combined with the thrown blaze, which will allow us to become radiant if we need a kill with them. Ideally, this will be back up if things fail on our end, so I would recommend you add on the invigoration outreach mods to help increase this passive speed. Since we aren't using wells, we are kind of at a disadvantage here, but not by a lot, just we are outside of our own comfort zone, that's all. Leftover wise, we have Harmonic Cypher mod times 2 to allow us to create orbs of power faster with our solar weapons, which we will need. Now, as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have, and how they will overall affect the build. For Head, we have Minor Resilience, Harmonic Cypher times 2 and Supercharged mod. Arm, we have Resilience, Fastborn, Surprise Attack mod. Chest, we have Mobility, Concussive Dampener. Arm of the Dying Star and Taken Charge mod. Leg, we have Mobility. Invigoration times Doom and Powerful Friends mod. Mark with Mobility, Outreach, and Swift Charge mod. Interestingly, the build allows your sidearm or any solar sidearm to become a one man army against anything it faces and with escalating damage as you see fit. Although it's more suited for Devil's Ruin and its outfire mode, weapons like the Fool's Remedy or the Red Bag 5SI can become laser beams with a mixed bag of perks that they can offer. This in many ways make them viable to use in PvP or PvE if you enjoy sidearms in the full glory, and also given their flexibility of shutting down players in close range, can be an amazing tool to shut down apes or fusion users alike. Now the best way to make the Devil's Rune effective is to fire off all but one round of the weapon, and then activate the charged laser attack for a final KO. This in practice will allow you to build up your damage through buffs, etc, and then dish it all out in a quick and tasteful manner. Of course, you can just activate Devil's Rune's special attack there and then, and really there's no downside to it. And this is pretty much what creates the build overall, as it's just simple to understand as it is for activating it. Using this setup in any activity will allow you to Devil's Ruin everything in your way, and this will feed into the build and give you super energy back with little effort involved. Alternatively, for Nightfalls, it's capable of ending many champions careers once they are stunned or simply when they are charging at you, since the damage available can easily take a quarter, half, or a full health out there and then. You don't even need to have all your stacks available to make it be effective against targets like those, as the weapon alone is pretty powerful in its own realm. I would also say its effectiveness can be stretched to your boss DPS as well once you get your ongoing stacks flowing. However, this is only effective on bosses outside of the raid and GMs, unless you have some killer team build in mind, and Devil's Room can only go so far in damage alone. The overall appeal of the build will suit those that want to give Devil's Room a try in a new seasonal activity and update. The Infinite Ammo buff and this season's subclass update focus on a heavy emphasis on high single target DPS. 
Now, however, this build does come with a downside of needing to reload after each charge attack, which we can circumvent via mods and aspects used. We also have to be careful of the stacks of buffs we have going as one simple slip up can lead us to needing to start again. Of course, making sure we have survival based mods like Well of Life or Well of Tenacity can do a lot in the higher difficulties. Overall, the build is fun and not to be taken too seriously in design. There are many ways we can utilize Radiant buffs to make any weapons feel amazing, but this is one way of doing so. Just don't try anything crazy and you'll be fine with this weapon in end game and survive for another day. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. And also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.